Hey guys, uh, chapter 4, lesson 2 is our lesson we're going to be going over today in this video. Uh, igneous rocks. In the previous lesson, chapter 4, lesson 1, we talked about the three types of rocks. Igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. We're going to go into detail about igneous rocks. Not too much to go over, but we will go over it today regardless. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to answer the following questions. Question number one, how do igneous rocks form? Question number two, what are some common types of igneous rocks? And we're going to go ahead and go over these. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, igneous rocks, of course, form from molten rock in the form of either magma or lava. Okay, We've gone over this when we talked about minerals. We talked about this in the last lesson. Lava, of course, is molten rock that cools quickly above the Earth's surface, while magma cools more slowly below the Earth's surface. Magma, of course, is molten rock below the Earth's surface. Lava is the molten rock above the Earth's surface. And the term igneous actually comes from the Latin word for fire. Ignite, you know, the word ignite uh, means fire. So igneous means coming from fire. So that's how you can remember how these rocks are classified. They come from stuff that's really, really hot, molten rock that is. Now, when volcanic material erupts and cools and crystallizes on the Earth's surface, it forms one of the two types of igneous rocks. If it cools on the Earth's surface, it's what we call extrusive rock. EX, of course, means out. So extrusive would mean outside of the surface of the Earth. Okay, It's sitting on top of it where we can see it. Okay, so that's the first type, extrusive rock. Some extrusive rock cools so quickly, however, because it's on air temperature, so you know, it could be like zero degrees Celsius, really, really cold, or even 35, like when it's hot around here in the summer in South Louisiana. Uh, that's still way cooler than how it is uh, in the lower parts of the crust and the mantle. So extrusive rocks will cool quickly because it's on the surface. And the thing is, they'll cool so quickly that crystals don't have time to grow. Okay, So the main thing about extrusive rock is that, uh, is that the crystals aren't really small because the rock cools so quickly. Now, uh, volcanic glass is another type of extrusive rock. Okay, and it forms when lava cools so quickly, glass doesn't, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the crystals actually don't even form. It's actually a type of glass that we would consider. And we're going to look at that in a second, uh, whenever we look at the two types of extrusive rocks. Okay, so extrusive rocks generally have really small crystals if they have them at all. If it cools really, really quickly, like if it forms underwater or something like that, uh, you'll have volcanic glass form. Now sometimes, and the most obvious part of the igneous rock you've probably seen, an extrusive igneous rock, is that sometimes gases trapped in the lava escape, leaving holes in the extrusive rock. So what'll happen if it cools fast enough for the gas bubbles to not allow everything to escape, you'll see bubbles and holes and gaps and things like that. Uh, if you saw the Scorcia demo I did in class, uh, if you remember, that was that rock that floated. And the reason why it floated was that there were gaps in the rock that air allowed to stay trapped in, allowing it to float to the surface. So let's look at two types of extrusive rocks. Okay, uh, here's one. Okay, the lava cooled before all the gas escaped. Here at the top, you see all these bubbles. Uh, pumice uh, is another type of extrusive rock that has these gas bubbles. Pumice and scorcia. If you've seen lava soap, that's a pumice rock or even a pumice stone, like I showed you guys. And like I will show you guys in class. And at the bottom, we have what's called obsidian. Obsidian is a type of volcanic glass. It's the most common volcanic glass you've probably heard of. Okay, so what happened was uh, this piece of lava cooled so quickly that the molecular arrangement didn't even form crystals. It formed an arrangement much like what we had glass, and it has a lot of the same properties. But because it's not made of, not particularly made of a clear silica or something like that, it has that black color, and obsidian has been long sought after as a gemstone because of these dark, shiny, uh, glass-like properties. Now, the other type of igneous rock is the ones that form down below the surface when magma cools, and because it cools it co underground, it cools at a slower rate. Okay, These rocks are what we call intrusive rocks, in meaning inside, so it's inside the Earth's surface. These intrusive rocks will contain large crystals, like I said, because the magma cools slowly. 
And the big difference that you can see between intrusive and extrusive rocks is that intrusive rocks, because they take so slowly in cooling down, it allows crystals to form so large that you can actually see them. Now, if we look at uh, the last, uh, this picture of granite from Yosemite National Park, like you saw in the last lesson, each of these specks are actually crystals. Okay, there's the mica, there's the quartz, and there's the feldspar. They're small enough that you can actually see them with your naked eye. You don't need a magnifying glass or anything like that. And if you were to zoom in, you would see the crystals would be much larger than the crystals that you saw if you looked at this, uh, this extrusive rock right here. Okay, so intrusive is made from magma, which is below the Earth's surface. It has larger crystals. Extrusive rock comes from lava, which is... Uh, molten rock that's on the Earth's surface, and it cools much more quickly, so the crystals are much smaller. Oftentimes, you'll need a magnifying glass or even a microscope in order to see the crystals in these igneous rocks themselves. Now, as with all types of rocks, the two characteristics that can help to identify igneous rocks are, of course, texture and composition, okay? Texture and composition are the two ways we identify rocks, and just like any other type of rock, we can do that with igneous rocks. If crystals, like I just said, if they're smaller and possible to see without a magnifying glass, then they are extrusive because they didn't have time to grow. If all the crystals are large enough to see and have an interlocking texture, in other words, it's like uh, they interlock like Lego pieces. They all kind of fit together. Uh, it's, they don't seem very loose. As a result, that would be intrusive because it took a long time to cool and so it had a long time to go ahead and form crystals and bond together. Igneous rocks are also classified in part due to their silica content. Remember, there are two types of minerals, silicates. Silicates include silicon and oxygen in their minerals, and then non-silicates are ones that do not. And of course, most rocks on Earth, 75%, I'm sorry, most minerals, 75% on Earth, uh, include either silicon or oxygen in there. Okay. Uh, most of the time, light color minerals will contain more silica. Sand, remember, is silicon, okay, or silicates. So remember, most sand is light colored. You can have dark colored sand in some cases, and those are oftentimes made from igneous rocks too. But that's just, that's just there for your information, okay? In addition, magma composition, the location where the lava or magma cools and crystallizes, and the cooling rate determine the type of igneous rock that forms. The faster the cooling rate, the more likely it might even be a uh, extrusive rock, or even within the Earth's surface, cooling rates differ, and the different types of crystals go ahead and form from there. So the things to remember for igneous rocks are the two types, extrusive and intrusive rocks, and how they're formed. So like I said, really short lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should have been able to answer the following questions. First off, how do igneous rocks form? Well, igneous rocks form from the cooling of, and crystallization of molten rocks both above and below the Earth's surface. And some common types of igneous rocks are extrusive. They form from lava on the Earth's surface and intrusive rocks that form from magma under the Earth's surface. Remember, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them and let me know. And if you're seeing this on YouTube, uh, just someone not even from my class, feel free to make comments and make fun of any typos or anything like that you see there. Thanks a bunch.